So why, why does uh, wood swell more in the tangential direction than in the radial direction? Yes, that's interesting, isn't it? I think, mm. uh, well, there's a couple of examples here. This one here shows cupping, which mm. is uh, for that reason. But I think this one here illustrates this much more clearly, that we've clearly got more movement round here. Mm. And this is the which direction? Tangential direction. Tangential yes. direction. And this is the radial direction. So it's not cracking that way, it's cracking that way because mm. we've got more movement that way. The general, quite often in the books, you'll read it's something to do with the ray cells. The ray cells are running this way, are in some way constraining movement in this direction. Mm. I'm not sure how much truth there is in that because I think ray cells, they're not really structural, are they? Uh, I don't know what you species, feel about they're, this. They're, 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 yeah, I mean, they're usually parenchyma cells, which are, are storage cells, so yeah. they don't have a very structural capacity. Yeah. I mean, what I've, what I've kind of understood also is that you, I, I think there is a contribution uh, by the ray cells, right. uh, and certainly the, the cracking initiates at the interface between the rays and the, and the, the wood. So that's a zone of weakness. That's then, a zone of weakness, yeah. Mm. But I think the, the, main, the main reason, to my understanding, why uh, we get this difference is, is that we have the alternating uh, layers of the early wood and the late Wood. Late wood, of course, being much denser, has a much greater swelling because there's more wood material there. So it, the relative swelling of the late wood is greater than the relative swelling of the early wood. So in the in the radial direction, we have a kind of a, a, a series model where we have early wood, late wood, early wood, late wood, early wood, late wood. But because the the late Could wood, you draw that on the board because you've tried lost, to, I mean, you've I lost try me. to draw this. Yeah, I'm supposed to be a professor of wood science, okay. and you've lost I me. Could, I could I could I could try to do it like, yeah. it like this. Of course, if I if I draw a section of wood here, this is now this is like late wood, right? And that's our bound growth ring boundary. Here's uh -huh. the late wood again. Do one more here. Okay, that's that's again late wood, and I'll do it like this also. Uh, late wood, early wood. Late wood. I'm not doing a very good diagram here, but basically, because this is higher density, uh, high density, late wood, and this is low density early yeah. wood. The, the early wood, because there's less cell wall material, it doesn't swell that much. Right. Uh, as much because as of the density, it, it's, it's, the amount it, of material. It, it, yes, there. density. Yeah. So, so when we get when, it, when we get a swelling in the this is the radial direction now. We get a swelling here. Okay, if the 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 late wood often makes a very small percentage yeah. of the total uh, yeah. growth ring. Okay. So you get a, a small increment here okay. of swelling, a uh, small increment of swelling here, and also a small swelling from the early wood. Whereas, Whereas in the uh, in the, the other direction, uh, yeah, the other, yeah, it, okay. So this, this is the tangential direction. The yeah, 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 yeah. Then, then of course we get we. we this is much. They all add against, up, don't they? It all adds up. So this yeah. is a kind of a. So it's going a series model. This yeah. is a parallel model. Now I understand yeah. what you're that, saying. That's, yeah. that's how I've understood yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, no. And then of course, then the, yeah. the additional bit with the with the the rays and the ray yeah, constraints. But so often in the textbooks, it will just go, oh, it's because of the ray cells and yeah. moves on. And I think this this is much more correct. I think, and I think there are differences also in the kind of the configuration of the cell wall of between the radial and, and the winding, so, microfibular winding, blah, 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 all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah. So not one single reason, no. but of course, a combination of many yes. as we often find with wood, yeah. Hmm. yeah. I think you're answering, asking me questions. Right. Did I ask that last one? I can't here. remember. Who asked the question? <laughs> it's either you or me. I, can't, I think you're supposed to be asking. Am I? So. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's your turn. What is the difference between uh, Norway spruce and Scots pine? What do you mean? What's the that's what, that's well, one's a spruce and one's a pine, isn't it? <laughs> but what's the difference? Obviously. <laughs> yes. I think the main difference is uh, pines generally are much more resinous, aren't they? Mm. Like spruces are, they're normally quite white. I mean, that, that, that sort of uh, the commercial term, they're often called whites, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, whereas uh, things like pines are called reds. And it's really to do with the amount of resin that yeah. you get in, in pines. It's, it's considerably more, you get more resin canals. Structurally, in terms of the cell <coughs> structure, I mean, there, there's not a huge amount of differentiation, I think, between quite a lot of these sort of coniferous species because mm. they're, they're quite simple, really. Yeah. But I, I think the main, the main difference is really the fact that spruces, they don't really develop a, a heartwood as such, yeah. whereas pines do. So it's really down to the amount of, of, of oh, extractives. Nice. Yeah, that's right. When I mean, there's a really that's nice example. There. So I guess that was a pine. I guess it was. Yes. <laughs> I don't think that's a spruce. Yes. Yeah. I'm not very good with these wood 
anatomy Christian, yeah. so I have to yeah. say. Yeah. I'm a chemist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, think, so, I think that's the so, main so we, thing. So we have, a, yeah, we have a chemist and a mechanical engineer yeah. talking about wood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then that doesn't know anything. Yeah, okay, well, great. we know a little bit. We know yeah. a little bit. No, I think, yeah, that's, that's, that's also my understanding of the difference. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, yeah. that really uh, is important when it comes to pulp and paper. Like, if yeah. you're going to make paper, spruce is much preferred because mm. you don't get the resin, unless, of course, you want to recover the resin and mm. make these... Uh, you know, Nibbles chemicals, pools. these yeah. chemicals from yeah. it. So yeah. like in craft pulping, but yeah. certainly mechanical pulping, much prefer spruce for yeah. mechanical. Okay. Another one? I'm afraid it's again back to pine and spruce. Oh, uh, no. so, uh, are pine and spruce used in different applications and why? I've just said that, haven't I? I think uh, that, in I think terms of structural, nice. I mean, if I was talking from a UK perspective, I would say, the th the, well, there's other things about spruce. spruce when you dry it, the uh, the cell, um, the, the pits mm. shut, don't aspirate. they? Yeah. They, yeah, aspirate. And that stops water getting through, and that can be a nuisance if you want to use a preservative. So yeah. you might tend to want to use a pine, pine if you're trying to put preservative in. But if you're making something like a thermally modified wood, um, the fact that it aspirates, thermal modification doesn't require you to have permeability. Mm. Uh, and actually having lack of permeability for something like a cladding material can be a good advantage mm. so if I was going to go for a cladding spruce isn't that durable but if you did a thermally modified spruce you could make some very nice cladding mm. out of it mm. pines well in my experience pines aren't that good for cladding they tend to crack but mm. maybe you have different experiences because we don't always have the same types of mm. you know if it's locally grown pine our pines tend to grow quicker anyway mm. so mm. Well, I can mm. see this one here the growth rings are very close together so. mm. 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 Yeah, I mean the the, the, the uh, example I can give is, is of uh, of uh, our, our house actually uh, the, right. the the windows are kind of pine heartwood and they were the yeah. original windows were you wouldn't probably made spruce would you no no and and, and it was very very close grain and incredibly yeah. resinous um, yeah. and Which massively is what you dense want. yeah and they they lasted a hundred years until yeah. we we had to kind of uh, renovate them and, and yeah. um, change actually change some of them because they had right. started to rot. But that really? was a hundred years. That's a hundred so years. Not it, bad, right. is it? So, that, so I think the, the kind of the, the, the heartwood is pretty durable. Yeah. Uh, so so um, you wouldn't get that with spruce. No. Because no. no. it's, it's the extractives really. So yeah. extractives yeah. and permeability. Yeah. Pine's quite variable in permeability, isn't it? The mm. Scots pine. Mm. 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 I know there's been a uh, research done on that, and it does seem to vary with latitude. That. Mm. Uh, yeah. So it's a little bit unpredictable with its permeability. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Oh well, we answered those. Wrap that one up. Maybe we do know something. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs>